Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. This fourth video of the Understanding the Results series will describe the hold down design and drag struts section in the design results. This is the same existing model used in previous videos of this series, but for the purpose of this example, we have added an additional story to the structure. The loads have already been generated and we will now run the design. The project file for this two-story structure is available in the description below. The hold down design table, available in the go to table tab, summarizes the tensile forces, capacity, and most importantly, the ratio of the force and capacity in the far right column. The layout and information provided in this table is similar in the case of wind or seismic design. Assuming either a rigid or flexible diaphragm design, for a total of four tables. Checking all four tables can be time consuming, so instead what you could do is go to the design summary page, where information on whether the hold down has failed or not is displayed, as discussed in video 5.2. Now back to the hold down design table, we can see that hold downs are grouped by level and shear line. The location shows the plan view X and Y coordinates of each hold down. The tensile column is where the force at the tension end of each wall segment for each direction from the critical wind or seismic load case is reported. The shear overturning component is based on the horizontal shear force only, in this case due to wind forces distributed using the flexible diaphragm assumption. The vertical dead load resisting component and the wind uplift component are populated only if we enter those loads manually. We talked about manual load entry in the previous video and in video 6, single shear wall example. The combination of the tensile forces due to the overturning force from the lateral load and the manually entered loads is shown in the fourth column. The type of hold down is listed for each end of each shear wall segment for all stories in the hold down column. If you have walls that uses anchorages instead of hold downs, the table reports anchorage instead of the hold down type. Note that Shearwalls does not design anchorages. Cap is the design capacity, tensile resistance of the hold down. And the last column, critical response, shows the ratio of the factored tensile force versus the hold down design capacity. Where the critical response exceeds 1.0, the hold down fails to resist the applied load. The drag strut force information is shown here. Notice that only forces are shown. Unlike hold down, Shearwalls does not design drag struts. To further understand drag struts, let's take a look at this image and force diagram. Drag struts drag, or transfers, the forces from the diaphragm above non shear walls, such as window openings, to shear walls next to the non shear wall. There are usually double top plates that act in compression and tension, with nails transferring the forces across joints from one plate to the other. In this case, drag struts are required on both sides of the center segment shown in white, which is a shear wall segment in the software. Drag struts forces are determined based on the cumulative shear force from the diaphragm at the top of the wall, minus the cumulative shear forces in the supporting shear wall segments. Since wind and seismic forces cycle back and forth, the collector is stressed in both tension and compression alternately. You can see that the maximum drag strut tension and compression are located in both ends of the resisting shear wall. These forces are reported in the elevation view, as well as in the design results. Just like other tables, the shear lines are grouped by level and wall name. Within the wall segment, the position indicates where the opening starts and ends, and is related to the next column, location, which shows the X and Y coordinates in plan view. The most important column is the drag strut force column, which displays the axial force in the transfer elements at the locations I just mentioned. In Canada, for seismic design, these forces are factored up by 20% as per CSA 08614 clause 